Welcome to the Murfreesboro City Council. It is June 18th uh, at 6 p.m. And uh, Vice Mayor Scales Harris has our prayer and then I will handle the pledge. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, hi guys, y'all good, how you doing? Hey, Madeline. Hey, may we bow our heads, please. Dear Lord, we love you and we adore you. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us to see this day that wasn't promised. Please forgive us of our sins, things unseen, things unknown. Uh, Lord, my heart is heavy tonight because our world is in such a bad shape. And emotions all over the world, Lord, they are at an all-time high. We pray this evening collectively for peace, unity, love. Above all, Lord, love. Lord, Lord, we ask and pray as leaders that you create in all of us a clean heart, a heart of service, love, a heart that lives by your guidance. And, 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 and Lord, we pray for respect for each other. Lord, you created a council that comes from different experiences in life, different skin colors, and so on and so on. But through our differences, we are able to serve and fulfill the needs of our city. Lord, we pray for protection over our families, our frontline medical workers, people, business owners that have had to foes or that are struggling now, people who lost jobs, uh, people that have completely depleted their finances. We play, pray for our police officers, firefighters, the elderly, the homeless, and the teachers as they prepare to teach our children. Lord, Lord we we, we pray for our city staff, and we pray a special prayer for our little children who haven't had adequate food, hugs, love, teaching, or anything since this virus. And, Lord, we also pray for the animals that have suffered through, it all, through this. All. And we pray for the students in the class of 2020. And last but not least, Lord, we ask a special prayer for our mayor who has had so many sleepless nights and frustrated days just 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 trying to be a leader and be the voice for our city lord we ask that you touch our mayor in a special way with your hands of protection and lord give him the strength and guidance he needs to continue to make the right decision as he leads our city. And Lord, as we begin our meeting, we ask that you move in the midst of us, that we may conduct business that is pleasing to you. This is my prayer that I, that I ask in your darling son's name. Amen. Amen. If you'll stand with me, please. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, Ms. Skills Harris. All right. We need to move item one on the consent agenda. Uh, we're going to move that to new business. So you have uh, eight items that are now on your consent agenda. Questions or comments about those eight items? I uh, move we approve those. Second. Motion second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. 
Hi. All right, we'll move into old business. We have land use matters, ordinance 20 OZ 14, a rezone approximately 1.44 acres located at the northeast corner of North Rutherford Boulevard and Gold Valley Drive. This is the second and final reading. Second. Mr. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, we have um, ordinance 20 OZ 13, a rezone approximately 30 acres located along North Thompson Lane, West College Street, West Northfield Boulevard in Hope Way. Second and final reading. Move for approval. Second. Motion to second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Hey, Mr. Blumley. Good evening, Good Mayor see McFarland. You. Good All right, see you. we're going to now handle uh, land use matters, Ordinance 20 OZ 17 to amend the West Lawn PUD on approximately 10.5 acres located along Veterans Parkway and Shores Road. Thank you, Mayor McFarland, and good evening to Mayor and Council. This evening, our one and only public hearing tonight is for a PUD amendment for the West Lawn PUD, which is located at the intersection of Veterans Parkway, Shores Road, and I-840. Um, the West Lawn PUD was approved 2007-2008 um, for a variety of uses along Veterans Parkway. It's predominantly commercial. Uh, there's a multifamily apartment complex that, was, that has been constructed. And then the West Lawn single family subdivision. And so the property that we are, the portion of the PUD that we are referring to in this public hearing is the area in the hatch marks. Uh, or the hatch lines at the southeastern corner of the PUD. So it's colored in purple and in the, uh, in the, uh, the hatched lines. These are areas C4 and C5. And about uh, a year and a half ago, uh, the PUD was amended to change this from a multifamily designation to include a variety of commercial uses as well. Um, so as a matter of fact, they had a townhome development. There's a developer proposing a townhome development three or four years ago that never went through. The property ended up sitting there, and then the PUD was amended to allow some, uh, some uh, commercial uses there as well. For about half of it, there are no residential uses permitted. The other half, there are some residential uses permitted, as they have been for, for years and years. Um, we've had a site plan approved for a medical office building, and now we've received um, some interest from St. Thomas Rutherford in developing a satellite hospital campus on this property. Um, one of the two areas of the planned development that was the subject of the amendment a year and a half ago, and those two areas are C4 and C5, one of those two areas does not permit hospital as a, as a permitted use. Um, so this is a very simple PUD amendment. They're not proposing any changes to the standards. Um, the only change is and I can see where it, where it might be a little bit confusing because they put they submitted us the whole 40, 45 page book, but the only change they're proposing is to allow hospital as a permitted use on both the C4 and C5 uh, parcels. So that's about, <clears throat> that's the total of about 20 acres at the southeastern corner, about 10 acres of that is already uh, permitted for hospital use and they want the hospital use to be permitted in, in both of those areas. Um, Planning Commission conducted a public hearing on this matter back on May the 6th and uh, recommended approval to the City Council. Uh, Mr. Uh, David Hendrickson with Reagan Smith and Associates has a uh, brief PowerPoint presentation that he would like to go through uh, regarding this uh, proposal. Um, and then I believe uh, Mr. Gordon Ferguson as well might have a word or two to say regarding uh, St. Thomas. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions before or after the public hearing on this matter. Mr. Blomley, just real quickly on that map right there, and I may just be missing it somehow. Where the the where where does it split between C4 and C5? Sure. Let me let me pull up a let me pull up a uh, <coughs> better exhibit for you. Ah, got so it. there's the area right there, and this dividing line divide C4 and C5. So, so adding to C4? As, uh, yes, adding, adding hospital to C4. That's correct. 
So hospital would be a permitted use in both C4 and C5. Okay. Thanks. Mr. Ferguson, would you like to speak? Good evening, Mayor and uh, City Council members. My name is Gordon Ferguson. Uh, I've got the privilege of serving as the CEO of St. Thomas Rutherford Hospital. Uh, we were privileged today to have the ribbon cutting of our vertical expansion project, which will add uh, 72 beds to our existing uh, hospital on Medical Center Parkway. Uh, the project that we are uh, proposing for the West Lawn area uh, is a, uh, referred to a, as a neighborhood hospital. Uh, we find that a lot of folks um, are a little bit intimidated by our larger campus. Uh, there are days I know uh, pre-COVID when parking was a bit of an issue, but uh, we've done a lot of um, uh, analysis in terms of where our patients are coming from and believe that uh, putting a neighborhood hospital in this area is the right thing to do uh, for our community going forward. Uh, this would actually be the first of its kind in the state of Tennessee. Uh, however, uh, Ascension, uh, who uh, owns uh, St. Thomas, uh, has uh, had success of this kind of a model in several other markets in uh, Wisconsin, uh, Indiana, and Texas. Uh, we are uh, considering an eight-bed hospital uh, that would also include a, an emergency room that would have eight treatment uh, rooms as well as uh, imaging and lab services. Uh, in this particular development, we are also uh, working in collaboration with uh, Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance in terms of constructing a orthopedic-specific ambulatory surgery center. Uh, that project actually goes before the state next week uh, where we'll be attempting to secure a certificate of need. Uh, the neighborhood hospital would also require a certificate of need and we were on the agenda uh, for that in August. But one of the things that we needed to do was to get the property that we're uh, acquiring uh, zoned correctly for hospital usage. So be glad to answer any questions, but certainly appreciate your consideration of this request. Any questions? All right, thank you, Gordon. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is David Hendrickson from Reagan Smith Associates. Thank you, Matthew, for introducing that, and I uh, hope everyone's having a good night so far. Um, I'm going to give you just a brief little bit of background, a little bit of uh, reference information. Um, up on the screen, you can see the project location, as Matthew pointed out, right along 840 and Veterans Parkway. Uh, pretty, pretty important intersection there, and the Westlawn development is a, a great opportunity here. This is an overall view, which I know uh, Matthew showed just previously, but as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner is the C4 area that we're going to be looking for, um, adding the hospital to. The rest of the site remains the same. We've made no other changes other than that. Here is an enlargement of the C4 area. In the top left-hand corner is the list of permitted uses where we've added hospital. The other bulk regulations for this area have not changed. Just want to note that as well. Here's some precedent imagery just showing for the C4 area. We've shown this previously and just want to um, make sure that we're still going to be meeting the the requirements in the Gateway uh, District and just give you an idea of what these buildings could potentially look like. The C5 area, as Matthew already pointed out, we are remaining the same. This is just for your reference that hospital is already permitted here. We're just adding it to the C4, which would be uh, abutting veterans um, uh, higher use of road as well. Here's just an enlargement of the C5. As you can see, it's mostly medical related with some residential uses still available. And then as a part of this, we're still requiring or still gonna be proposing that we have a buffer in between any potential residential houses to the south 
and that was where the uh, current Shores Road is. So we would still be having that buffer that's going to be included in these plans. And that is it. I'm here for any questions that anybody may have. All right. Any questions? All right. Thank you so much. All right. We, we'll need to um, conduct a public hearing on this amendment for this PUD request. Um, when we open the public hearing, anyone wishing to speak for or against can come to the public, uh, come to the podium, state your name and address. If you'll keep all questions directed towards the council, um, we will get those questions answered at the end of the public hearing. If you are a group, you have five minutes. If you are an individual, uh, you have three minutes. Anyone wishing to speak about this rezoning, uh, or excuse me, this amendment to this PUD, uh, please come to the podium. Uh, my name is Michael Singetti. I live at 722 Given Court. Um, it's great to see that we're conducting business as usual here. Um, unfortunately, business as usual should not be continue until the address until the needs of the community are addressed. Uh, of course, I'm referring to what happened on May 31st. Sir, are you are you going to um, talk about the rezoning request? I am, I'm talking about the rezoning. I don't think this, you are. Uh, you're, you're conducting business as usual when the needs Sir, of the community uh, have not been addressed. Our public hearing is about. I have three about, minutes of time to talk. No, you don't. Your public your public hearing is for this amendment to the PUD. It's not a public I comment. I, is this public? Mr. Sangetti, I'm asking you, please don't put us in this position. Uh, this is our public hearing rules. You can go watch any council meeting that we've had. This is the way we conduct business. So I'm going to ask you, if you want to talk about this rezoning request, at Westlawn, you are more when than willing to... When can we talk about what happened on the 31st? No, sir, you're out of order. I'm going to ask you to sit down. Thank you. Okay, anyone else wishing to speak for this rezoning request or this PUD amendment? All right, seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. We'll now consider Ordinance 20 OZ-17. Motion and a second. Ms. Wright, if you'll please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, now we have planning commission recommendations to schedule public hearings. Mr. Blomley, what do you have for us? Yes, sir, Mayor McFarland, we have two to schedule tonight. Uh, planning commission considered them at their last night meeting and voted to recommend approval on them. Uh, we should be able to easily handle these in one night. We are recommending a public hearing date for both items of July the 23rd, if it pleases council. July 23rd. Move we schedule public hearings for July 23rd. Second. All right, you have a motion? And a, and a second. second. And a second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris? Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Thank you. All right, we'll now uh, move into all motion, and we have the council consent, or excuse me, we do need to go. Um, uh, we do need to go back and handle fiscal year 20 budget amendments. Uh, this is finance. That's right. Uh, actually, it's the city schools. Okay. Mr. Anderson. Yes, good evening, Mayor and City Council. This is our housekeeping resolution for the city schools to amend the budget for the 2020 school year, the 1920 school year. And what we're asking is that you approve the uh, resolutions. We're not using any additional fund balance. We had offsetting uh, savings in areas of where we had spent more money, and we're not asking for anything extra. We just need to have these approved so we fit the guidelines of the state and the uh, school district accounting. Any questions for Mr. Anderson? No questions made for approval. Second. Motion and second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris? Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, we'll now move into uh, council consent for employment of Kennedy Ryan Martin as a lifeguard, and this is for Parks and Recreation. Move for approval. <laughs> <laughs> The Berkus Borough Parks and Recreation Department is very fortunate to have a strong team of part-time and seasonal staff. Um, I'd like to request your approval to rehire one of our lifeguards, Ms. Kennedy Martin. Um, as we have done since 2018, when her father was elected to council, we need your approval in um, making that, um, that request. Our policies require a council vote since she is related to a council member. All right, we have a motion and a second. Ms. Scales Harris had the motion. Mr. Lalance had the second. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Abstain. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. <laughs> hey, don't look at me. <laughs> Mr. Way. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. All right, we have the approval of the state maintenance contract for fiscal year 2021. Raymond. Mayor, Council, uh, seeking your approval to move forward with the uh, state maintenance contract for the physical year uh, 2020 and 2021. Uh, the only difference between this contract from last year is a slight increase of $38,568, so the grand total coming to $3,441, and we're seeking your approval to move forward with that, please, so that we can continue to perform the routine maintenance there at the state routes located within the limits of the city of Murfreesboro. I'm here to answer any questions that you guys may have. There's no questions to move for approval. Second. Motion and second. That's right, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Way. Mayor McFarland. Aye. On board and commissions, I do. There's, uh, we have several different reappointments and appointments, but I want to ask um, to do um, this as a look see. So everybody, I know you, this is really this since Tuesday is the first time you've really seen them. So we're going to handle that at the next meeting. All right. Any other business? Any statements to be paid? Can yes. We get back to licensing. It was yes. before boards and commissions. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. We have one beer permit tonight. They have actually met all of our requirements for. Uh, the background check as well as the building codes inspections. It's for a new restaurant location at 2395 New Salem Highway, Suite J. Move for approval. Second. <coughs> Motion to second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Any other business, um, any statements? We do have a statement tonight, Mayor. Okay. It's for some training for our fire department. And um, because there wasn't a, something that had already been brought to council, we need to bring this to you for your approval. Any questions? Move for approval. Second. Motion and second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Mr. Tindall. Yeah, on, uh, on the appointments, um, I was reminded that there is a planning commission meeting on the 8th. And so uh, we, because the first is uh, a short week, we probably won't meet on the first, which is, or the second, which is the Thursday. So the ninth would be our next meeting. So those yeah. really need to be. But I think the plan, the way the appointments work, unless I'm wrong, those people will continue to serve. Until reappointment? Until re not with uh, well, where David go? I don't know if that's true for planning. That, it may be. We need to not have any way. That's just not good. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any issues with the Planning Commission appointments? It's their two reappointments. They're doing a really good job. Okay. Is that a motion? I mean, as a matter of fact, does anyone have any issue with most with any of the reappointments? And and actually, the appointment to the library board we had on the last agenda. So, does anyone have any appointments or any issues with the reappointments 
or the appointments of any of them. Hold, hold on just a second. I need to change okay. something. Just a minute. Let's hold the... the My name is not on there, Bill. No. <laughs> I just need to check just a minute here. Just let me well, get to that yeah, point. Well, let's do this. Let's do um, <laughs> item 16, 18, 19, and 20, the reappointments, and then the appointment. We can hold off on that one, Bill. Does okay. anybody have an issue with the reappointments? All those people are willing to reserve. I'll make a motion that we... Go ahead and approve all of the reappointments and those items that you just mentioned. Okay. <laughs> Motion is second. Ms. Schrock, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right. We'll hold off on the appointment. Is there any other business from staff? I do have one request if we could get back on our, however we need to do it, on our regularly scheduled public comment section. So I think what we had talked about is we would start the council meeting, the public comment at 6. We would do the public comments from 6 to 6.30. Those would not be televised. And then council, we uh, would go at 6.30. We could do that. We're, we're going to do that after June. So okay. next. Yeah. So first, first, first meeting, meeting, first meeting, meeting in July. Yeah, yeah, first meeting first in July. So first meeting in July. the gentleman who got up and left, if y'all were related to him in July, we're going to have a public comment section that will be the first meeting in July. That'll be at six o'clock. And you're welcome to come to any of those meetings and, and um, say for any comment. We just cannot legally have comments on other discussion that's not related to the public hearing that we're having. So um, that's just the way it works. I appreciate that because it's yeah. been a very long time since you have allowed public commentary. Okay. And a very long COVID. time. So I appreciate yeah. that. Well, we, uh, we uh, unfortunately, we <laughs> haven't. No, no, no ma'am. We, we had it every month. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're welcome to go back and check the agenda, but we had it every, mo every month before the pandemic. Anyway, so, thank you. so thank you. All right. Um, so any other, other information? Or any other, yeah. Bill. I've got a couple of couple of things I want to give a, a reminder to the council and to let the public know as well. Uh, one of them, uh, you know, we're searching for doing a survey and search for our new director of schools. And on the 23rd uh, at noon, there there's going to be a community leadership meeting, and the council's invited to come to uh, central office, uh, Murfreesboro City Schools central office and be a part of that uh, requesting what uh, uh, criteria we're going to be searching for. So I encourage, I think you've all gotten an invitation. Hope you'll all be able to, should have gotten an invitation for that. Uh, but the community's uh, invited also TSBA, the Tennessee School Board Association is, is kind of being the guide uh, the, uh, through this uh, process. They're going to have a community meeting that night. It's at six o'clock at central office as well and the community's invited to come and give their input to that process and I, I'd encourage folks to come certainly a vital position and an important role for us to uh, fill and be a part of and the other thing is uh, something that's happening this weekend uh, yeah, some of you are aware that we're not able to have Uncle Dave making days this uh, year because of uh, COVID and uh, there is an online concert uh, going to be done. It's called Roots Rendezvous. It'll be, it's lots of work have been done. Our mayor did the intro for it the other day and he did an excellent job of introducing folks to Murfreesboro and, and to what uh, our community offers. Uh, there'll be several uh, Roots musicians on that uh, uh, online uh, concert and I would encourage you to go to Roots Rendezvous and, and uh, but it starts at 12 o'clock and it'll go to 2.45. And uh, there are actually going to be several of these kind of online concerts, but it is a benefit for musicians and artists that are affected by the COVID. Uh, and I think it's a good way of uh, introducing people to Murfreesboro uh, and, and also to help the musicians that are struggling during this time, just like so many peop people. But I'd Absolutely. encourage you to look that up online, Roots Rendezvous. All right, any other business? Oh, yes, uh, my census, 2020.gov. Uh, Sam Huddleston is going to tell us a little bit about that. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Uh, something I uh, meant to mention earlier, um, we, we get um, reports from the 
U.S. Census activities for Rutherford County, City of Murfreesboro, and for specific census tracts, um, letting us know the uh, percentage of uh, our um, response. Um, City of Murfreesboro is doing quite well, but we do have some underperforming census tracts. Um, so you'll see in the next few days some um, activities by city staff. One of the things we want to do is every public meeting, especially public meetings that are advertised and, and uh, published on uh, City Channel 3, just to remind our residents, uh, if you haven't filled out the census forms, please take an opportunity to do that. It's, it's very important to us to have an accurate count. Uh, it affects our funding from state and federal agencies. Uh, if you do not have a form that you've received from the Census uh, Bureau itself, you can visit the website mycensus2020.gov, uh, mycensus2020.gov, and there's some step-by-step -step instructions that will allow you to make an online submittal. Uh, we appreciate your cooperation in that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Shelson. All right. Seeing no other business. We'll stand adjourned.